Today, we'll examine a 2013 incident that happened in Minnesota. At a clothes store in the Mall of America, 30-year-old Kira Steger worked as a store clerk. She never missed a shift because she loved what she did. She didn't show up for work on February 23, 2013, and her co-workers became concerned. Kira didn't respond to their calls or texts when they tried to contact her, and they quickly reported her missing to the police. In De Plain, Illinois, on November 19, 1982, Kira K. Steger was born. Her parents, Marcy and Jay Steger, characterized her as their bright, devoted, and affectionate daughter. Kira had a job at the Mall of America, where she had previously worked at Wet Seal and Delia's. Not only were her co-workers terrific friends, but Kira also thought of them as family. Kira had a special ability to spot people's strengths that they themselves weren't aware of. She made plans and held out hope for a good and peaceful future. Sadly, when Kira abruptly disappeared, all of her dreams came to an abrupt halt. Kira worked a shift on February 21, 2013, a Thursday. Her co-workers reported that she had been in excellent spirits and had made plans to meet her husband at a beautiful restaurant after the business closed. Three years ago, Jeffrey Trevino and Kira first met. As soon as they met, a romantic connection developed between them that eventually led to a wedding. In general, Jeffrey and Kira appeared to be a contented and solid married couple. Even if they occasionally disagreed, they always kept it to themselves. At the very least, none of their friends, family, or co-workers were aware of them. When Kira failed to show up for work on Saturday, February 23, two days later, her co-workers became worried because such conduct was unusual for her. She followed her schedule religiously, was punctual, and was severe with herself and other people. Her co-workers called Jeffrey after being unable to reach Kira, but he was unsure of her whereabouts. According to Jeffrey, Kira had left the house the day before and had not returned. Kira occasionally went missing for a day or two, so it wasn't particularly concerning to him. She would go unannounced to a relative's home or spend the night at a friend's residence. The awful weather that day, which had been snowing fiercely, could have been one item to worry about. Perhaps something could have happened to her on the way, according to Jeffrey. Perhaps her automobile got stranded and the battery in her phone died. The same day, after hearing nothing from his wife, Jeffrey reported Kira missing and contacted her relatives. Her family members suffered a great loss when their loved one mysteriously vanished, which caught them off guard. Detectives started searching for Kira Steger after receiving a missing person report. The inquiry began by questioning the husband and looking around the immediate area, as is customary in such circumstances. This was no different. Detectives visited Jeffrey's home to speak with him. On Thursday, Jeffrey and Kira planned to spend some time together, according to information provided to detectives. After bowling, having dinner and conversing, they eventually left the mall. According to Jeffrey, he and Kira returned home right away because Kira wanted to see a movie. Jeffrey additionally revealed to the officers that his wife left their home the following day, a Friday, at around 8.30 a.m. Her mandatory attendance was required for a work event that was arranged. He didn't see anything odd about the way she was acting. Even though he had no idea where Kira was or who she was hanging out with, Jeffrey didn't find it odd that she occasionally vanished. According to Jeffrey, they experienced relationship issues for a while. He did not, however, believe it to be significant or worrying viewing it as only a small dispute that happens in all families. The investigators began questioning Jeffrey about Kira's possible residence and whether or not she may have had a partner. The man declined this advice because he had personally inquired about it with Kira and received a negative reaction. According to Jeffrey, he truly loves and trusts his wife. The detectives gave the patrols that were on duty all the details they had been able to learn about Kira and her vehicle. The investigators personally visited the Mall of America to verify the veracity of Jeffrey's claims and perhaps gather some evidence. One of the largest shopping centers in the world is the Mall of America. The location is in Bloomington. It has 520 stores, as well as theme parks, an oceanarium, cinemas, a golf course, and many other amenities. It is therefore not surprising that the mall has numerous security cameras installed. The detectives looked into the time Kira left her job on February 21st because they knew that. Nothing out of the ordinary was visible in the video. Jeffrey's story was accurate. After work, 
he ran into Kira, and they spent some time hanging out at the mall before heading to the parking lot and leaving. They didn't argue, and it seemed like everything went well that night. Nothing is worse than having to wait without knowing what is happening, and as each day passed, Kira's concern for her life grew more and more intense. Kira's family made the trip to Bloomington to try to assist with the inquiry after receiving no word from her and growing weary of waiting. They made flyers with her images on them, put them up on poles, and handed them out to those walking by. They wanted to draw as much attention as they could to the Kira search. They understood that they had to do everything in their power to find their loved one and that they could no longer just watch. The investigators kept looking as Kira's family was handing out flyers. Officers discovered a security camera on one neighbor's home while questioning the couple's neighbors. The sideways rotating camera caught Kira and Jeffrey's house from one of its perspectives. So, in an effort to gather any clues from the video footage, the investigators requested that the homeowner duplicate it for them. Records from a cell phone provider arrived in the interim and gave detectives a fresh lead. Kira had another male in her life besides Jeffrey, based on her phone records. Ryan Went, the manager of the same chain of stores where she worked, was revealed to be who he claimed to be. They corresponded frequently and had a very long and intense connection. While Kira's whereabouts were still unknown, police were able to determine that Ryan Went was out of the country and was driving towards Colorado. This man was extremely important to the inquiry since, in addition to dating Kira, he also relocated out of state around the time she vanished. Maybe it was only a coincidence and nothing more, or maybe everything was different and his escape has a hidden meaning. That is a question that the investigators would have to resolve. Nevertheless, Ryan was located by the detectives, and after agreeing to attend for questioning in Colorado, he answered numerous questions. He claimed that he texted Kira the last time he spoke to her, which was while he was driving across South Dakota. These texts had been exchanged just before Kira vanished. Detectives discovered that Kira had been in touch with her new lover when she was having dinner with her husband, after carefully examining the timing of the text messages. The correspondence made it clearly evident that Kira and Jeffrey were growing apart. The detectives looked at Ryan's phone to figure out where he was in relation to the mobile towers and went over his credit card bills. He didn't seem to be involved in Kira's disappearance that specific evening and appeared to be out of state. On the basis of that, he was declared free and removed from the suspect list. The timestamps on the texts showed that Kira was still messaging Ryan after she and her husband got home. However, their conversation came to an end at 11.44 p.m., and Kira hasn't touched her phone since. In the meantime, a different team of detectives was preparing to review the video recordings from the security camera set up on Kira's neighbor's house. This camera swept left and right, capturing most of the roadway. However, because it was turning too quickly, it was difficult to observe because if the investigators saw something suspicious, the camera would swiftly turn to the opposite side. Only a few seconds were spent catching a glimpse of Jeffrey and Kira's home before the camera panned to the right. After supper and bowling, according to Jeffrey, he and Kira returned home, watched a movie, and went to bed. However, when investigators watched the tape, they saw that Kira's automobile retracted into the yard shortly after 2 a.m., it was difficult to make out exactly what was going on screen at that moment due to the poor quality of the footage and the constant side-to-side -side movement of the camera, but the car quickly departed from their home. The reason for the late-night excursion, according to Jeffrey, was because Kira had asked him to fill up her tank before she left for work tomorrow. Surprisingly, his account of what happened was accurate. He was in fact observed at the petrol station at around 3 a.m., However, the detectives found that after leaving the petrol station, he didn't go back home, but instead headed in the direction of the highway for an unknown reason. It's not known where he went after that. Although the neighbor's camera was constantly spinning, it did not capture his return home, so it may have just been a coincidence. Theoretically, Jeffrey might have returned home later that day while the camera was pointed in the opposite direction. Further examination of the video by the investigators revealed that Kira's Chevrolet left around 9.21 a.m. Unfortunately, there was no way to tell who was driving. On Saturday, February 23rd, a missing person complaint was made to the police, and on Monday, February 25th, the police received a call to report the discovery of a suspicious-looking automobile. 
There are two multi-story parking lots next to the shopping area where Kira worked. Security officers called for a tow truck after seeing that a certain car had been parked there for several days. Before picking up the automobile, the tow truck driver checked it out and noticed what appeared to be strange red smudges on the trunk lid. He immediately dialed the police. Kira's white Chevy turned out to be that automobile. There wasn't much blood, just a few little stains, but the fact that it was there was really bad news. Divorce court forms were discovered in Kira's purse, which was found in her abandoned automobile. These documents appeared to have been acquired from the internet. The investigators also noticed a small black object that was lying in the snow behind the car. As they approached, they noticed a rolled-up trunk mat with dark stains on the back. It was identified as Kira Steger's blood by DNA testing. The detectives began to regretfully accept that Kira was probably no longer alive. Her relatives and friends were horrified over this terrible finding. The fact that they had lost all hope of seeing Kira again raised a lot of questions in their minds. Who could have been so angry with her to have taken her life? How did she die? And did she suffer? The situation was made worse by Kira's disappearance because it was much harder to deal with the grief that had befallen them without it. Now, the investigator's first concern was finding the driver who left the car in the parking lot. At 9.21 a.m., the car left the house. About 20 minutes later, the mall's cameras captured it. The parking lot where the car was found was free of cameras. However, the walkway leading to the car was covered by a camera. The camera was situated close to Kira's vehicle. The detectives watched the video taken by that camera and saw that a man with a hood over his head first appeared in the video a short while after the white Chevrolet pulled into the parking lot. The fact that the man was wearing a hoodie seemed normal given the temperature, but the detectives were interested in following him because of his whereabouts. The hooded man was observed crossing the street and making his way to a taxi stand, where he spoke briefly with one of the drivers before boarding the vehicle and driving away. The firm that owned the taxis parked in the shopping center's parking lot was identified by the authorities. The cops had little trouble figuring out the vehicle's license plate number, based on the time of the hooded man's interaction with the driver. GPS tracking devices were installed in every cab, and it was discovered that the hooded guy ended his journey a block from Kira and Jeffrey's home, where he then exited the vehicle after paying cash. The same camera that had captured some of Kira and Jeffrey's home's footage was still pointed at the cab as it exited the neighborhood. A hooded figure entered the frame after two minutes. The white emblem on his hoodie stood out despite the low resolution of the video, which made it impossible to make out his face. The hooded figure was seen entering Kira and Jeffrey's home, while the investigators continued to watch the video. The hooded man was almost certainly Jeffrey, because Kira had gone missing. The police officers arrived at the house with a search warrant in hand. It appeared to be an ordinary, uninteresting house at first, but that was only at first. Criminal investigators started to discover heavy blood stains in the spouse's bedrooms after closer inspection. A few stains were on the wall next to the bed, and the mattress had about 100 of them. The bedroom appeared to have been recently organized and cleaned. The carpet on the floor virtually lit up when the forensics team sprayed luminol on it. There were numerous blood stains on it that were invisible to the human eye. From the bedroom, these stains spread to the other side of the house. The forensics team was able to positively identify Kira's blood, which confirmed the authorities' suspicions that she had passed away. The police looked inside the house and Jeffrey's automobile in addition to that. They didn't uncover any signs of a vehicle or any blood in the automobile itself, but they did manage to unearth something of interest. An hour and 40 minutes prior to Kira's automobile being abandoned in the mall parking lot, Jeffrey's vehicle included a gas station receipt. The information on the receipt indicates that Jeffrey's card was used to make the purchase. Detectives went to that petrol station to look over the surveillance tape, go over the... The video showed Jeffrey filling up his car, walking inside, and using an ATM to get cash. This video gave us a glimpse of Jeffrey's face and revealed that his jacket had a logo on the breast area that matched the one on the man in the prior video. A warrant was issued for the arrest of 39-year-old Jeffrey Trevino based on this recording and all other evidence discovered inside the home. He was taken to the police station to be questioned, making him the lone and main suspect. As soon as Jeffrey left the interrogation room, he called his lawyer, who encouraged him to invoke his right to silence. Although the police had enough evidence to indict him, 
his body would be the clearest indication of his guilt. There was no question that Kira was deceased. Kira's family, several volunteers, and the police spent months looking for her. Volunteers at Keller Lake, a few kilometers from Trevino's home, found an odd bag by the highway in late March as the snowdrifts began to melt. They immediately alerted the police. A shirt, a bra, and a bloody cushion were all in the bag. Due to Kira's DNA being found on the goods, the forensics team was able to trace the discovery to her. Divers searched the water body despite the lake's continued ice cover, which made it difficult. They still didn't find any remains inside. Four search dogs that were trained to discover bodies were used to scour the area near the lake several times, but to no avail. On May 8, 2013, which was two and a half months after Kira vanished, the St. Paul Police Department received a distressing call. The person who answered the postal call reported seeing what seemed to be a dead body in the Mississippi River to the operator. What the cops pulled out of the water turned out to be a body. On it, there was no clothing. According to medical records, Kira Steger's body was there. She shattered the index finger on her left hand and sustained significant blunt force damage to her forehead. The medical examiners were unable to determine a precise cause of death due to the extent of decomposition. Investigators attempted to piece together the sequence of incidents that led up to Kira's death and the subsequent occurrences using the fresh evidence. They hypothesized that when Jeffrey and Kira arrived home, he learned about or observed that she was texting someone else. When Kira refused to show her husband the letter, he violently took her phone from her and shattered her finger. After reading the amorous correspondence, Jeffrey became even more furious and killed Kira in a fit of wrath before attempting to hide the crime's evidence. He utilized her vehicle to travel to the residence, place the body in the trunk, and then proceed to a gas station in a river where he dumped the body. The bag holding Kira's pillow and clothes was then dumped as he drove back home. He knew he would have to pay for a cab after leaving Kira's car in the mall's parking lot, and it would be easier to do it in cash. So the next morning he went to a gas station and drew out cash from an ATM. After getting rid of Kira's automobile, Jeffrey returned home and spent the remaining part of the day cleaning. By using subterfuge, Jeffrey hoped to give the impression that Kira was fine and had driven off in her car by herself that morning. However, his strategy was thwarted by security cameras. A jury found 39-year-old Jeffrey Trevino guilty in October 2013, agreeing with the defense that his actions were not premeditated and that the crime was the result of a tense and unexpected confrontation when he learned of his wife's adultery. Kira's family members spoke before the judge delivered his or her ruling on the sentencing. The monster is a planned criminal, Kira's sister Carrie Ann Steger declared. He is not deserving of mercy. Trevino undoubtedly showed no mercy to Kira, according to her mother Marcy. She said that he had dumped my daughter like a piece of trash into the country's most polluted body of water. The grief Trevino has caused their family, however, can never be made up for, according to her father, Jay, regardless of the punishment. He declared, No matter how much time you give Mr. Trevino, it's never enough. Jeffrey Trevino was sentenced to 27 and a half years in prison in November 2013. In 2031, he will be eligible for parole.